السلام عليكم Good evening everyone. My name is Farida Banu and I am a PhD candidate from Faculty of Business Management at UITM Shala. Today I'm excited to present my conceptual paper titled Muslim Friendly Hospitality Attributes towards the destination loyalty with the moderating effect of cell community. This paper explores the key elements of Muslim friendly hospitality and how they influence destination loyalty among Muslim travelers. I also examine the moderating role of self congruity which looks at how a traveler's self-image aligns with their destination choices. The aim is to better understand the relationship between these factors and how they can enhance the overall travel. Shifts in the consumer behavior, technology and lifestyle have modernized the hospitality. To attract millennial and Muslim travelers, uh, women travelers, providers should expand halal friendly offerings, services and activities. Muslim tourism has rebounded with about 145 million arrivals in 2023, nearly 90% of the pre-pandemic levels with growth expected to reach about 230 million tourists uh, with uh, USD of 225 billion uh, by 2028. The Muslim population is projected to increase with economic growth among the middle age groups, boosting travel potential and demand for halal tourism products. Malaysia with its MS2610 2015 standard supports the sustainable of the Muslim friendly hospitality by enhancing the halal services and prayer spaces. However, Muslim friendly hospitality services are mainly located in an urban area with service gaps in the rural areas due to providers' unawareness. Standard, standardization and upskilling are needed to expand the accessibility. So this study also uses the image formation theory to understand loyalty factors uh, for Muslim friendly destination in Malaysia. The Muslim population globally is expected to reach about 2.47 billion by 2034. And uh, in Malaysia itself, the Muslim population accounts for about 74% of the country's overall population of 34 million people. Having such a large Muslim population in Malaysia, there is an enormous possibility and opportunity for Islamic services, particularly for Muslim friendly hospitality to flourish. And uh, government also had made strong uh, commitment to reactivating the entire tourism industry to place Malaysia as a major travel destination. Uh, as of uh, September 2, 2020, uh, ITC uh, or Islamic Tourism Center has given recognition to about 30 hotels in Malaysia as Muslim friendly hotels. And uh, one of it uh, is uh, D Palma Hotel, which is a Sharia compliant hotel, was first to provide the uh, Muslim friendly uh, hotel services and uh, Islamic compliance. And other uh, hotels, namely uh, like Moven Peak Hotel and Convention Center, Hotel Grand Ruby Sha'alam, the Light Hotel Penang, and many more. So meeting the Muslims' uh, travelers' needs is actually divided into necessities, wants, and nice to have, which are very crucial. So Malaysia, with 74% Muslim population, has immense potential, ranking first on the Global Muslim Travel Index alongside Indonesia. So now we look at the problem statement. Though economic contribution of tourism to Malaysia economy is high, but the government agencies are still facing challenges to maintain or improve the arrivals of OIC countries um, like Turkey, Bosnia, and Herzegovina, Bulgaria, and also Indonesia, which are all expected to see an increase in the demand for uh, Muslim-friendly uh, services and attract the Muslim travelers. 
So Malaysian Muslims start favoring also non-OIC countries like South Korea, Japan and Philippines because they provide travel recommendations that cater to the uh, Muslim preferences by providing best halal eateries and close uh, prayer facilities, which is, can be a threat to Malaysia. There is also a paucity of research on Muslim-friendly hospitality characteristics, which has significant impact on country's destination image. More empirical research is needed to expand the concept of uh, the halal tourism and how they align with the needs and desires of the Muslim consumers. Few studies also discuss the self congruity in the tourism context. Jay Hing in 2019 confirmed that many variables are important in predicting the effective and cognitive assessment, which in turn influence the Muslim tourist behavioral intention. In addition, we also can see growth in women travelers traveling alone who prefer to have needs to have services like segregation of the facilities and privacy. 9-11 tragedy in Washington triggered the emergence of Muslim tourism as the word Islamophobia quickly became synonymous with Muslims. Muslim travelers have started to divert their mode of traveling to Muslim countries, including Malaysia. When you look at the research gaps, I've identified two big gaps here. One is the Muslim-friendly hospitality. That it shows that there is a scarcity of research on the trends of halal hospitality characteristics or attributes that have a significant impact on country's destination image. Uh, it is highlighted by Aansi, Michael and also Anderson. Many studies of Islam and tourism concentrate only on Muslim travel rather than Muslim hospitality and the relationship between host and guests. Identifying the specific halal services that draw Muslim visitors and that they are willing to pay more is a huge research gap. And second gap is self-congruity. Research of the simultaneous link with, uh, between self congruity and tourist evaluation characteristics is still required. Still, a depth of publication addressing self congruity and also Muslim friendly hospitality, taking into account the moderator or the mediator variables of the self congruity itself, may allow for a more in depth outlook, as, as mentioned by Soap in his uh, paper or in his study in 2020. So based on the literature review, I've identified five uh, research questions and objectives. So my research objective are, first is to investigate the influence of Muslim-friendly hospitality attributes, uh, which has a significant influence on Muslim-friendly uh, destination image. And the second objective is to determine whether Muslim-friendly hospitality attributes influence the tourist uh, satisfaction. And research objective three is to determine whether Muslim friendly destination image influences satisfaction. And fourth research objective is to investigate whether tourist satisfaction influences the Muslim friendly destination loyalty. And fifth is to determine whether self congruity moderates the relationship between the Muslim friendly hospitality attributes and Muslim friendly destination image. So uh, now I look at the theory and the framework. The two theories which I have used in this thesis is image formation theory and self concrete theory. Image formation theory is try to understand the factors that actually influence the image formation, which in turn influence the tourist decision making processes. And existing image creation models, however, do not often include the totality of the tourist experience, including the stages before, during, and after the trip. The cognitive component relates to assessment based on personal belief and understanding of the tourist destination, features or physical attributes, emotions and sentiments, or attachment to a location are referred to as the affective component. And the cognitive component of the third dimension is concerned with travelers' activities based on their overall impression of the destination. So I've incorporated the self congruity theory that matches the tourist self-concept and also the image of the destination. Okay, now I'm just going to look at the, the attributes of the Muslim-friendly destination uh, 
weekly attributes, uh, which are uh, focused on creating inclusive, respectful environment alignment with Islamic values for Muslim travelers. Key attributes include Islamic friendly accommodation with prayer spaces and privacy, accessible facilities like halal dining and ablution areas, and a social environment that respect cultural norms. Local staff trained in Muslim culture help ensure sensitive service encounters, while food and beverage options are fully halal certified and alcohol free. Additionally, Muslim friendly hospitality offers specific amenities like modest swimming areas and family friendly spaces. In tourism uh, studies, self-congruity is typically understood through two dimensions, which is actual self-congruity and also the uh, ideal self-congruity. So, um, the uh, actual self-congruity actually reflects how what individuals perceive themselves, while the ideal self-congruity concept reflects how they would like to perceive themselves. Researchers often focus on these two dimensions because they strongly align with social self-measures, which capture how people view themselves in relationship to others. This approach, supported by studies from Billy and uh, Chun, and Enkichi helps explain why tourists may feel a stronger connection to a destination that resonate with their own self-image, as also supported by Yang in 2020. Okay, so based on my literature review, I have identified these are the variables which I've used to develop my theoretical framework uh, based on image formation theory and also self-community theory. And I have come up with uh, five hypotheses. So the research paradigm I uh, use this research is positivism or a quantity approach. Uh, because there is a substantial body of literature, known variables and existing theories to back up the work done in this study. And the theories I've used is image formation theory where the Muslim-friendly hospitality attributes and Muslim-friendly destination image comes under the cognitive image, satisfaction come under the affective image, and Muslim-friendly destination loyalty come under the cognitive image. And the self cognitive theory, which uh, comprise of actual and ideal cognitive. And the unit of analysis, the respondents are local and foreign Muslim tourists, which uh, exists uh, in Malaysia, and uh, which covers main tourist destination states in all six regions in Malaysia, namely Northern, Central, Southern, East Coast, Sabah, and Sarawak. And the uh, sampling method I use here is uh, non-probability sampling, uh, specifically the judgment sampling. And data collection, uh, will be, uh, it will be using the survey method, which uh, question is which will be distributed through Google Form, email, and face-to-face -face, uh, uh, communication. And the data analysis will uh, be using the SPSS and also PLS SEM4. Okay, for the survey instrument, uh, I'll be using the seven Likert scale and about 73 items, uh, which covers the uh, about uh, five, uh, six sections, demographic questions, really questions related to Muslim-friendly hospitality attributes, question related to Muslim-friendly destination image, uh, question related to satisfaction, and question related to Muslim-friendly destination loyalty, and finally, question related to self congruity And the, uh, the seven-point scales correlate most strongly compared to the uh, five-point scales. And the questionnaire also will be pre-tested by expert review to establish the phase validity criteria required before conducting the pilot study. And the questionnaire was assessed by two independent domain uh, experts. And the chroma alpha construct for reliability and average variance are extracted are the three approaches used to assess construct reliability in this study. As a preliminary step, expert opinion will be sought from supervisors and fellow researchers familiar with the questionnaire to make it shorter in length. And finally, the pilot study, which is a mini survey of the larger population, to see, will be conducted to see what problem could be faced 
It will be conducted to evaluate the concurrent validity of the questionnaire instrument. In determining the sample size for this study, uh, uh, be using the several guiding principles recommendation from existing literature. Firstly, a G power analysis uh, will be used to indicate the minimum uh, sample uh, size requirement with the minimum effect of 0 0.15 and significant level of 0 0.05. We would need a minimum of like uh, 95 respondents to achieve a sufficient statistical power. Uh, however, based on Hayes' uh, 2006 recommendation, a more appropriate sample range for robust result is required, uh, which is between 200 to 400 respondents. Similarly, Sapron and Boogie suggest that sample sizes larger than 30 but fewer than 500 are more generally suitable for most quantitative studies, aligning well with our target range. We also reviewed a comparable study that utilized a sample of 350 respondents. Uh, so with this in mind and to ensure reliability, we will target a maximum sample size of 400, which following a year's uh, upper range recommendation. So this approach provides a solid basis for obtaining a meaningful results while ensuring sufficient power and generality of the findings. If you look at the research contribution, for the practical com contribution, um, so uh, it will bring uh, more awareness to the policy makers and business operators, mainly the tourism de uh, developers and managers in halal destination, to concentrate on obtaining, obtaining the Muslim tourist confidence with priority on halal products and services. And this study outcome also may help the accommodation providers and government agencies also to capitalize on Islamic heritage and stronger halal assurance like halal certification and Muslim friendly rating and halal Arabic logo to doubtful halal assurance such as no pope, no lag sign. Based on the theoretical contribution, uh, it will give an improvement to the image formation theory by introducing community variable like uh, Muslim friendly hospitality and integrating also the self community theory into it. And that's all my presentation and thank you.